Ciao everyone! Uh, another slow fashion video coming at you this midweek. I hope you're all doing well. I'm talking today about my style icons and how they have influenced my personal style over the years and how they continue to influence my personal style as well as what my wardrobe plan is for 2021. This challenge really made me think about how I am approaching my own closet and my own personal style so I really appreciate this tag, the Chic Chanteuse. Thank you so much. She has a great YouTube channel all about um, body typing and capsule closets. The whole body geometry thing I think is just like wizardry to me. So if you want to get into that topic, I would definitely recommend her channel. And I think Audrey Coyne was tagged in this challenge too. So definitely go and check out uh, her video there as well if this is a topic that interests you. So uh, jumping right into it, I have to say that this actually ironically was a bit of a challenge for me. I really had trouble identifying if I even had any style icons. From a young age, I did always pay attention to what I wore. I was very heavily influenced by the people in my immediate surroundings. And we spent three years uh, from the ages of four to seven, I think I was, in the UK. So that really shaped, I think, my first impression of what I like to wear and style. When we lived in the UK, my dad was in the military. I spent a lot of years you know, surrounded in the military world, in the Canadian military world. So I, I loved that kind of pomp and circumstance that came with all of the events that my parents had to go to. My dad always wore his, his mess kit, which was just really beautiful. I find that these militaristic styles, like the clean lines and epaulettes, brass buttons, I think all of these things still heavily influence my style today. I didn't really watch a lot of TV growing up, so I didn't have that influence. So my style really only became influenced from these outside references when I was maybe in my 20s. I think my first real style icon is, or was, Jenna Lyons, especially when she was the head of J Crew. Jenna Lyons always had a really cool mix of casual and very very fancy pieces. She would pair a feathered maxi skirt with a plain white tee. I think Jenna Lyons is probably the ultimate mix master and that has heavily influenced my style now. Less so my style when I actually really coveted what she was wearing and how she put her looks together because I, I didn't really understand what she was doing and instead I think I just tried to buy items that were very similar to hers and like pile them all on. I don't think I was very successful at emulating her look because I couldn't really identify the elements or the techniques that she was using. Now I would say my style is much more evolved in terms of being able to translate what I love about someone's look into my own personal style and my own wardrobe, but I would still say that I have a hard time pinpointing very specific style icons because I tend to just love any outfit that is beautifully put together and has really start smart styling elements. Like I just, I love so much that I see. But when it comes to what I would realistically wear, there are only about three or four people who I specifically look to. And I divide them into two categories. There are two women who I look to for very daily outfits not when I'm going out, not when I need, I feel like I need to impress people or anything, but just my everyday wear. Those two are Emmanuel Alt and Garance Doré, two French women, <laughs> of course. I find their style is just so effortless. There's a lot of ease to it. I love how Emmanuel Alt, without fail, will wear the same uniform day in and day out. And maybe that comes from my, my militaristic, is that a word? I think so. Um, you know, influence from when I was young. Whether it's a tapered denim or a nice slim pant with a loose fitted button down or t-shirt and then a sharp blazer or coat over top, this to me is like the ultimate. And then if I'm looking to step it up or get a little bit more creative, I love Olivia Palermo and Solange Knowles. I think these two just know how to create a killer outfit 
that is unique but also classic. All of the looks that, I'll pop some on the split screen here, or maybe here, I don't know. Um, all of these looks that I'm pulling, I don't know what year they're from. They are fresh and current and yet they could be five or three years old. I love how they incorporate contemporary pieces and contemporary colors and silhouettes in such a way that doesn't ever feel dated. So those are my style icons in the traditional sense, but I definitely still get um, inspiration from influencers I follow on Instagram or Pinterest or my wonderful neighbor gives me all of the cool style magazines from the New York Times and the Globe and Mail. So I get great inspiration from all over. And that brings me to in my closet and how I really started really thinking about how I want to approach my own closet. The first change I'm going to be making is switching out my hangers. I know this seems to be like the simplest thing ever, but the hangers that I currently have are horrible. These hangers were very expensive uh, because we, they came with our custom closet that we had built in our condo. And because we had paid so much for them and because they're still serving a purpose, I really couldn't let them go. But I have decided I'm going to switch to all velvet hangers. They are thinner, so they take up less space and my clothes are going to stay. So not super groundbreaking, but I think it's gonna make a big difference in terms of me being able to shop my own closet. The second thing I'm doing is a very solid and perhaps more intensive declutter. I regularly cull my closet. Um, I always try on my maybes. I have a video about that. I will link it for you here, but I've recently, in particular because of this challenge, have taken the time to thoroughly go through some of my items and I realized that especially in the loungewear and the occasion wear sections I have a lot of pieces that were just either hand-me-downs from friends or family members or things that were given to me because people know I like cool secondhand items and vintage things which is really flattering and wonderful but I have a very hard time saying no and I also have a lot of pieces that several years ago I thrifted because I just got so excited that they were so inexpensive and these were beautiful pieces that I could afford. But again, they didn't really suit my style. I also did a video about slow fashion mistakes and that was one of them. Uh, so I will link that one up there for you as well. The goal of the declutter and altering is to get my closet as much as possible down to the basics and in a palette that I really love. The final piece of my wardrobe plan is to fill in any gaps of, you know, those fun or more interesting pieces through rentals. I love the re the monthly rental program so you can really kind of live with a garment and you can extend that time if you really enjoy it. So that's how I'll be filling those more fun experimental gaps in a sustainable way. So that's the plan, anyway. Uh, I hope you don't mind that I've shared it with you. I I mean, it's proof that no closet is perfect. I mean, at least I don't think anyone's closet or personal style evolution is perfect. I think especially for those of us pursuing slow fashion and conscious consumption, it is a constant evolution. So uh, I hope you don't mind me sharing this next stage of evolution in my closet with you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you are doing the same, if being in lockdown has kind of forced you to rethink how you are consuming fashion and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, so that's it. Let me know in the comments below. Always curious. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you are having a wonderful week and I will see you in another slow fashion video. Ciao!